Tommy Curran, how are we doing this week? Good. What's up, you kids? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Mega wants to know if you've uh, dabbled in threads yet. I think are you was, on the threads? That's what you wanted to know. The threads I had Tommy? no idea. I had zero idea what it meant last night around 6 o'clock. I had to, like, get the search thing on Twitter, figure it out. And just it seemed like lemmings sprinting for the same thing, which immediately made me say, I'm not doing that. So you so, searched I'll probably for the end Twitter. You search for the Twitter alternative on Twitter. Yeah, no, I no, I saw what was going on. I mean, you offered up feet pics. Am I yes, wrong? I did. I mean, no, that's yep. a, that was a so. joke. You know, you know how ugly my feet are, Tom. We work together. I wore oven toe <laughs> shoes. I'm a runner. Yeah, no, it. it, it looks it's like a, a situation. Place. It's a it's a situation. <laughs> let's get back to football. Okay, well let's 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 get to the the, the Patriots situation, right? I, I have noticed, Tom, and I, I don't know if you picked up on this as well. Your your buddy there, Mike Florio, has been putting Bill's feet to the fire a little bit over the last week. I feel nationally, Bill is getting his feet put to the fire uh, to to stick with the feet theme here uh, a little bit more over the course <laughs> of this week. And I'm wondering I'm wondering why you think that is. I, I know it's July. I know maybe that's a good opportunity for everybody else to kind of catch up on what's going on around the league. NBA playoffs are done. Stanley Cup playoffs are done. It's the middle of summer. So maybe it's that. You also, you know, last week, and this might be somewhere where Florio got to it, you brought mm -hmm. back up uh, something that Bedard talked about uh, where Robert Kraft has never presented a, a budget to Bill Belichick, and it's like this peeing contest back and forth. I guess it's a two-part question, long, long way of asking. Uh, number one, do you agree? It seems like Bill is starting to get his feet put to the fire a little more nationally. And two, wh why do you think that is? I really think it germinated from our conversation last week. You know, I mentioned it. Um, I mentioned it in the context of Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Hopkins and why neither had been signed and pointed out that I really don't think it's a, a craft thing. It's a Bill thing. And he's economically sound and prides himself on that. That got repurposed. And then I think it got aggregated locally and then passed into the ether. And really, Greg Bedard did a great job of, I wasn't in the immediate vicinity of Robert Kraft at the owners' meetings when he was talking about this, but Bedard got those quotes and you know, made sure that we all got them as a, as a media group, that Robert Kraft made a specific and pointed effort to rebut and refute Bill's you know, 27th in the league in spending over the last three years. So... That rankled Robert. It unquestionably did. And Bill, I think, has tried to walk it back in saying, I'm, I was just making an observation and saying that sometimes we're up, sometimes we're not. I'm not trying to say we're cheap. But the upshot is, as we sit here and wonder why no DeAndre Hopkins, it's Bill, it's not Robert. And I think that in the, the void of really any breaking news, the Patriots are fun to fixate on. And who is fixated on the most attractive free agent available, it's the Patriots. Why wouldn't they do it? Well, does it come back to money? So I think that's how we got there on DeAndre Hopkins and the resurfacing of those quotes. But I still think the Patriots are going to be the suitors who are the most aggressive. It was about this time last week that they redid those deals for Devontae Parker and Juwan Bentley. And they, those both freed up money for 2023. And that means to me that you might try and squeeze all of them in into this year. Tommy, you say the Patriots, you have the sense that they're the most aggressive. Do you get any sense of Tennessee maybe cooling off a little bit on the DeAndre Hopkins pursuit? And I know there have been two other teams in there. We haven't heard that much about them, but it, it seems like you're saying the Patriots are front runners. Does it seem like there's any real competition out there for DeAndre Hopkins? What I found really telling was when Mike Vrabel was asked about DeAndre Hopkins, he spoke in generalities and said, we'll have anybody who wants to be here. It was very, look, we're not going to chase this guy all over the countryside and try and tackle him and drag him in against his will. If he wants to play for us, he can play for us. Meanwhile, the Patriots have been as overt, I think, in allowing word to spread that they're interested as, as they've ever been with kind of a high-profile free agent. I mean, if they didn't want Matthew Judon putting out social media pictures from the locker room, they could have said, can, can you not do that? We want to keep it professional here. And I think Judon would have gone along with that. But they didn't care. That was good for them. And I think that's good for Robert Kraft. That's good for Bill Belichick. That's good for the fan base in the end, too, because I think that this is a thirsty fan base and really media would 
for the Patriots to do things that will kind of vault them into the conversation as being a team that's going to win more than seven and a half games. We uh, we played the clip from you on TV last night uh, coming back into this segment. You seem less sold on the idea of Dalvin Cook. Why? I just don't think that they're over the moon about it. it. I just don't get that vibe. And I think that we keep circling back on Dalvin Cook again for the simple reason we don't have a million shoe toys to, to play with, just those two guys. And the Patriots have been, I think, religiously you know, affiliated with free agents because it doesn't hurt to do it. Agents love to do it because it pumps up, I think, value and, and urgency among other teams. But Dalvin Cook has made specific mention of two teams, and neither of which was the Patriots. He made mention of the Jets. He made mention of the Dolphins. Uh, I think both of those teams on paper will look like more sure things to go and be playoff teams, and I don't think the Patriots are going to break the bank for a running back. Can I veer on one thing? Yeah. Yes. You don't, you don't like this. I got a really good question on our podcast, from Current Patriots Talk Podcast. You can find it on I NBC listened, Sports Podcast. I listened this podcast. morning. What did you run? think of the defense thing? Okay, I thought that was Meg. that was really interesting. I liked the stats that you brought up. If you want to give a short kind I, of, I don't want to out myself as I want to. I don't want to out myself as not uh, listening to this edition of the the very fine Patriots Talk Podcast. But what are we talking about? So the question we're that talking it, about. You guys were doing like a mailbag, and the question that was lobbied at you was, was last year's defense championship caliber, great, very good, or not that good? Good. We're good. Good, very good, good. excellent championship Sorry. caliber. And I, what would your knee-jerk reaction and answer be to that, Jonesy? Uh, mine would be it was a good defense, not championship caliber or elite or great or, or whatever the other options are right. because they, they feasted on backup quarterbacks. Yep. I say good to very good. And I think as we enter 2023, we continue to look at this team and say, well, at least the defense is good. At least the defense is going to be outstanding. So I went and I looked. I'm writing right now on it. You look at the numbers that back this up. Eighth in total yards per game, first in defensive touchdown, tenth in points per game, second in takeaways, second on fourth downs. But then you drill down a little bit and situationally, and everything's top ten. Virtually everything is top 10. But third down, they were 21st. Red zone, they were 22nd. And goal to go, they were 27th. And then when you, again, drill down a little further and look at the schedule from last year, you look at a team that beat Kenny Pickett. um, No, excuse me, Trubisky. Zach Wilson. um, Edged Skyler Thompson and Teddy Bridgewater. Right. Beat Colt uh, McCoy needing a defensive touchdown by Kyle Duggar to salt that away. In Indianapolis, beat, Sam Ell- Ellinger. Beat the hell out of Sammy Ellinger. Yep. Um, they shut out the Lions, who ultimately were a pretty decent team. But on that day, the Lions decided, you know what, let's try and make a point here and go on every single fourth down. <laughs> right. And they failed like seven times. And then they chewed up uh, the Cleveland Browns. And, and Jacoby Brissett, and Brissett had a, a poor game. So when you look at the guys they lost to, too, they lost to Justin Fields, the worst team in football, and they got motorboated. Motorboated? No, yeah. what's the other thing? Boat raced. Boat raced. <laughs> if they got motorboated, yeah, that would no, be... They, they got motorboated. That would be really something. I like that. Let's let's make that catch on. <laughs> yeah, they're motorboated. <laughs> <laughs> well, they lose 33-14 <laughs> to the Bears. 33-26 to the Vikings. Yep. 24 to 10 to the Bills when they basically put up the white flag and tried to save face. They did uh, allow a tying touchdown to the Raiders with 32 seconds left from 30 yards away. You know, they they I guess we would hang our hat on making the case that they were good or even very good. You know, we look back at that Bengals game and it was 22 to nothing at halftime. And then I remember people saying, well, at least the second half, they held them down. It was 22 to 18. They were holding them down because the Bengals had basically said, all set, we're heading home, sip an eggnog, we've got to get on the plane and put some toys together. And they came back in that game, but it was they were completely non-competitive in the first half. So there's just this boatload of games that they beat up on crap teams, and when they saw guys like Lamar Jackson, who put up 30-plus, they couldn't contend. Motorboat load. 
So, <laughs> so wait, so we just, put too much. Well, so I was just gonna say, so put a bow on it. So what? So what is the? What's the takeaway? I, like I, we're I just, we're hanging our hat on the million, defense being good, and what they're yeah. not? They're the team's in trouble. Uh, no, well, I mean, you don't have to go. You know, just on to that lily pad from there. I'm just saying. Well, I think we big. overrate. As I sit here, as I sit here and look at the team and call them a 10 or 11 win team because. They have a very good defense, and they have Mac Jones poised to resume where he was at the end of 2021 because of Bill O'Brien. Part of that has to be really scrutinized now as we get closer. Well, how good were they really last year when I say that this is a team that can be led by its defense? And I wonder if I've oversold and overbought how well they were based on those stats and forgot about the devil being in the details. All right. He is Tommy just, Curran. He just joins us every week. Yes? Just, 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 just an observation. No, I uh, I like it. I'm ready to leap off the lily pad. I, I know that's uh, that's too far of a jump for you, but I am, I'm ready to do it. Uh, he's Tommy Curran, NBC Sports Boston. He joins us every week on the Harbor One Hotline at 3.30 here on Jones and Mego with Arcan. Uh, I think we covered a lot. Uh, feet picks and, and motorboating. I think we covered quite a bit today, Tom. That's exactly what we were looking for, yeah. Tom. Time for vacation. Good, good, thing, good thing we're heading to vacation. Enjoy right, your trip, Tommy. All right, enjoy, Tom. Thank we'll talk you, to you in a couple of weeks. Uh, Tommy Curran, as we said, uh, joins us each and every week here on WEEI.